investigation. Well, President Trump today making it clear what he thinks should happen to the suspect charged in Tuesday's terrorist attack in Lower Manhattan. Mr. Trump tweeting, quote, New York City terrorist was happy as he asked to hang ISIS flag in his hospital room. He killed eight people, badly injured 12, should get death penalty. The criminal complaint details how the 29-year-old Uzbek native planned to continue his killing spree and intended on racking up more victims on the Brooklyn Bridge. Joining me now to talk about the Trump administration's reaction to the New York City attack, former strategist and deputy assistant to President Trump, now the chief strategist for the Make America Great Again Coalition, Dr. Sebastian Gorka. Doctor, great to see you. I want to first talk about critics of the president, in particular those who, who suggest that this terrorist was a lone wolf. And that phrase kills me because it's an oxymoron. Wolves go in packs. There are no lone wolves. But listen to what Governor Andrew Cuomo said regarding this issue uh, earlier in the week. But from all the evidence we have, he was the quote-unquote lone wolf model. Uh, we don't have any evidence that suggests this was part of a larger plan or there, or there were future actions uh, or there was a large concerted effort. Uh, in many ways, we're seeing the evolution of jihad tactics. Of course, the more we learn about this guy, the more we realize he did have a network. But what's your reaction? You know what's really disturbing is that Governor Cuomo actually made a similar statement within minutes of the attack, which is um, beyond irresponsible. There is absolutely no way he knew right then whether or not this man was acting alone or was part of a broader conspiracy, as now clearly seems the case. But to your broader point, lone wolf, and I've written about this, I've talked about this for years, uh, is a phrase, is a concept that was used by the Obama administration literally to make Americans Stupid. It was an idea that was trying to make you disconnect the dots on jihadi terrorism. There has never been, since September the 11th, a significant plot of domestic terrorism, meaning inside the United States, in which a lone perpetrator was completely disconnected from everybody else in the broader jihadi movement. Even Major Nidal Hassan, the Fort Hood shooter, who acted by himself, was in regular contact with Anwar al-Awlaki, al-Qaeda's leader in Yemen. So it's just lies. It's the, bogus. The other thing we know about him is he was, he was very religious. He lived right next to a mosque. One of the mosques that he attended was actually under surveillance by the New York City police uh, up until 2014 when groups like the ACLU took, took the police to court for this surveillance Perhaps, and I, there's no way of knowing for sure, but perhaps if we had continued with the surveillance, we would have caught this guy. Yeah, uh, we saw a systematic trend under the Obama administration, thanks to groups like CARE, who say they represent right. Muslims in America, but who don't. Uh, there was a systematic use of political correctness, threats of cause uh, of Islamophobia, uh, to basically uh, endanger American lives. Political correctness is used to undermine national security, and that's why Mayor de Blasio has attempted to shut down the most fruitful undercover intelligence operations, the NYPD established after 9-11. You know, technology is great. Intercepting phone calls and emails is great. But at the end of the day, the best quality intelligence comes from human assets, human intelligence, undercover agents, confidential informers who are in the communities, who can identify a terrorist before they make that pressure right. cooker bomb, before they rent that truck and mow down women and children uh, in Manhattan. So, yeah, we, we need to get back to common sense. And that's, you know, that's what the president is doing out, out of the White House. You know, one thing that distinguishes him, him from a lone wolf, if there ever was a lone wolf, is the fact that he brought 23 of his relatives over, having come here with a diversity visa lo uh, lottery, having won that lottery, brought that, that group of people with him. How do we change this? Does the, does the president have the power to change this? Does he need Congress? Uh, what's the step here? Because clearly it's a very big danger to Americans. It's massive. I mean, this is this is Russian roulette through immigration policy. That the idea that somebody from Afghanistan, 
somebody from Yemen, somebody from Uzbekistan, if they've got a high school diploma and two years of work experience, can spin a wheel, and then if he gets the right number, he gets a green card. That's insanity. Uh, this is a law, the diversity uh, visa lottery, um, but the president constitutionally has the unique mandate to decide upon who comes into America and under what yardsticks they are measured. That's why his uh, travel moratorium has stood the test in the courts and the Supreme Courts to date. So, yeah, the president will respond. We have to end it, and we have to have common sense back in our immigration policies, David.